Chapter 4 True Speech Truth is known by practice only. Without sincerity there can be no knowledge of truth, and true speech is the beginning of all sincerity. Truth in all its native beauty and original simplicity consists in abandoning and not doing all those things which are untrue, and embracing and doing all those things which are true. True speech is therefore one of the elementary beginnings in the life of truth. Falsehood, and all forms of deception, slander, and all forms of evil speaking, these must be totally abandoned and abolished before the mind can receive even a small degree of spiritual enlightenment. The liar and slanderer is lost in darkness, so deep is his darkness, that he cannot distinguish between good and evil, and he persuades himself that his lying and evil speaking are necessary and good, that he is thereby protecting himself and other people. Let the would-be student of higher things look to himself and beware of self-delusion. If he is given to uttering words that deceive, or to speaking evil of others, if he speaks in insincerity, envy, or malice, then he has not yet begun to study higher things. He may be studying metaphysics, or miracles, or psychic phenomena, or astral wonders. He may be studying how to commune with invisible beings, to travel invisibly during sleep, or to produce curious phenomena. He may even study spirituality theoretically and as a mere book study. But if he is a deceiver and a backbiter, the higher life is hidden from him. For the higher things are these, uprightness, sincerity, innocence, purity, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, humility, patience, pity, sympathy, self-sacrifice, joy, goodwill, love. And he who would study them, know them, and make them his own, must practice them. There is no other way. Lying and evil speaking belong to the lowest forms of spiritual ignorance, and there can be no such thing as spiritual enlightenment while they are practiced. Their parents are selfishness and hatred. Slander is akin to lying, but it is even more subtle, as it is frequently associated with indignation, and by assuming more successfully the appearance of truth, it ensnares many who would not tell a deliberate falsehood. For there are two sides to slander. There is the making of repeating of it, and there is the listening to it and acting upon it. The slanderer would be powerless without a listener. Evil words require an ear that is receptive to evil in which they may fall before they can flourish. Therefore, he who listens to a slanderer, who believes it, and allows himself to be influenced against the person whose character and reputation are defamed, is in the same position as the one who framed or repeated the evil report. The evil speaker is a positive slanderer. The evil listener is a passive slanderer. The two are cooperators in the propagation of evil. Slander is a common vice and a dark and deadly one. An evil report begins in ignorance and pursues its blind way in darkness. It generally takes its rise in a misunderstanding. Someone feels that he or she has been badly treated, and filled with indignation and resentment, unburdens himself to his friends and others in vehement language, exaggerating the enormity of the supposed offense on account of the feeling of injury by which he is possessed. He is listened to and sympathized with. The listeners, without hearing the other person's version of what has taken place, and on no other proof than the violent words of an angry man or woman, become cold in their attitude towards the one spoken against, and repeat to others what they have been told, and as such repetition is always more or less inaccurate, a distorted and altogether untrue report is soon passing from mouth to mouth. It is because slander is such a common vice that it can work the suffering and injury that it does. It is because so many, not deliberate wrongdoers, and unconscious of the nature of the evil into which they so easily fall, are ready to allow themselves to be influenced against one whom they have hitherto regarded as honorable, that an evil report can do its deadly work. Yet its work is only amongst those who have not altogether acquired the virtue of true speech, 
the cause of which is a truth-loving mind. When one who has not entirely freed himself from repeating or believing an evil report about another hears of an evil report about himself, his mind becomes aflame in burning resentment, his sleep is broken, and his peace of mind is destroyed. He thinks the cause of all his suffering is the other man, and what the other man has said about him, and is ignorant of the truth, that the root and cause of his suffering lies in his own readiness to believe an evil report about another. The virtuous man, he who has attained to true speech, and whose mind is sealed against even the appearance of evil speaking, cannot be injured and disturbed by any evil reports concerning himself, and although his reputation may for a time be stained in the minds of those who are prone to suggestions of evil, his integrity remains untouched, and his character unsoiled, for no one can be stained by the evil deeds of another, but only by his own wrongdoing. And so, through all misrepresentation, misunderstanding, and contumely, he is untroubled and unrevengeful, his sleep is undisturbed, and his mind remains in peace. True speech is the beginning of a pure, wise, and well-ordered life. If one would attain to purity of life, if he would lessen the evil and suffering of the world, let him abandon falsehood and slander and thought and word. Let him avoid even the appearance of these things, for there are no lies and slander so deadly as those which are half-truths. And let him not be a participant in evil speaking by listening to it. Let him also have compassion on the evil speaker, knowing how such a one is binding himself to suffering and unrest. For no liar can know the bliss of truth, no slander can enter into the kingdom of peace. By the words which he utters is a man's spiritual condition declared. By these also is he finally and infallibly adjudged. For as the divine master of the Christian world has declared, By thy words shalt thou be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. End of chapter 4 Recording by Andrea Fiore